What's up guys and welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day and if you're not this this game will make your day amazing definitely and, it's, and if it's already amazing then it will make it even more amazing. Uh, now this game has a story. Uh, Anand beat Carson without even thinking but how, how did this happen? Well uh, this game was played in 2014 in their rematch uh, match. Uh, but Anand, six, six years prior to this game, uh, played Kramnik on the World Chess Championship title. And uh, Anand prepared this exact variation to Kramnik. So uh, he prepared the variation to Kramnik, but he actually did not play it. So it was not, uh, it was not revealed. Why did this happen? Well, uh, before, the, before the match began, like a couple of days before it began, uh, a Russian grandmaster called Evgeny Tomashevsky, quite a strong player. He played the same variation, uh, or like uh, very similar to the variation, uh, in, in a in a chess game in, in some tournament. And um, Anand and his team thought, okay, maybe Kramnik knows about this and he he has already prepared it. Let's not play this variation. So they did not play it. But later, when Anand played Carlsen, he he just played the variation and. Uh, yeah, let's see what happened. So Anand here with the white pieces opened with d4. We have knight f6, c4, uh, e6 by Carson, knight f3, uh, avoiding the Nimzo Indian here after knight, knight, c, knight c3 and bishop b4. So knight f3, d5, uh, knight c3 now, bishop e7, bishop uh, goes to f4, castles. Uh, bishop f4 is the second most common move here. Uh, bishop g5 here is the most common move played. But um, this move has been analyzed quite a lot. I mean, you, you, could, you could just play 30 moves of theory here. So uh, bishop f4, especially uh, when, uh, uh, when Anand uh, and Carson played, this move was not as analyzed as, as it is today. So castles, e3. Knight bd7, and now the idea of the variation here is c5. Uh, so white grabs space on the queen side, and uh, he has a powerful bishop on this diagonal. c6, uh, and now bishop goes to d3. Now, remember what I told you about the game Evgeny Tomashevsky played, and uh, that was the reason why uh, Anna did not play this variation to, uh, to Kramnik. Well, Tomashevsky here played h3. Uh, I will explain what is the difference between h3 and bishop d3. There is actually a difference. It's it's insanely hard to spot this during a game. Uh, but with analysis, bishop d3. So bishop d3 is stronger than h3. I will show you why. Tomashevsky, uh, when he played this game, he thought, okay, I will play h3 because after b6, this is the only plan for black. You go b4 here, after a5, you go uh, a3, just uh, keeping the pawn chain, and now bishop a6. Uh, black has a has a bad light, light squared bishop, and it's blocked by its pawns, so he wants to trade it. And now you take, and you take with the rook. This is the, uh, this is the reason why Tomashevsky played h3 here. He thought, okay, h3, a useful move, uh, it stops knight g4, the bishop now has a retreating square, and... I did not waste a move on bishop d3 and bishop takes. But h3 is not that good. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not as good as bishop d3. Let's see why. Uh, so let's check what happened in the game and then we will go back to this variation. Now, after knight bd7, uh, c5 by Anand, c6 by Carlsen, bishop d3, so b6, remember the idea, b4, a5, a3 to keep the pawn chain, and now bishop a6. So Bishop d3 instead of h6, h3. Bishop takes, rook takes, and now b b5. This is the idea here behind the variation. After b takes, you push your pawn to c6. Now, this pawn as white, it, it's your only play. If you if you keep this pawn until the end and manage to defend it, you will most likely win. If you lose this pawn, you lose the game. So after c6 here, the main move is. Uh, queen c8. So this is all analyzed and uh, known both to, Car to Carson and to Anand before the game. Uh, the the only square to your to the knight uh, for the knight to move to is b b8, but you lose your knight later. So 
Queen C8 is the only move here. Uh, you go, you go here C7. So you defend your pawn again. You lose this pawn, you lose the game. This is your only hope of creating play here as well. This is your only plan in this position. Uh, knight takes here on p5, queen takes, you are already worse here. So, you push the pawn to c7, and now uh, black says, okay, I have a pawn, uh, I want to push it. Uh, taking is bad here, because bishop takes, and you're facing a lot of problems, and these pawns are strong, and this pawn is... It's blockaded, and it's hard to, hard to see how it will develop. And also, this knight is quite important, you will see why. So c7, uh, b4, and now the knight goes to b5, and now uh, uh, black plays a4. This is again all analyzed and uh, known both to both players. The idea of a4 is to create a pass pawn here on uh, on the p-file. Rook goes to c8, again over protect protecting this pawn, it's very important to have this pawn. And now Anand goes knight uh, e4. Uh, sorry, Carson. And here, knight g g5 by Anand. A very important move in this posi position. It's a key move. So, uh, Anand's idea here is, if you take here, it seems like a free piece. After uh, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight d6 wins the game. So, the queen has attacked, and I'm about to queen next move. So, you, can, you cannot take the knight. Uh, but, what is the difference between this and a3, the h3 that Tomaszewski played. Okay, so Carlsen he played knight df6. If Carlsen played bishop takes, and after bishop takes, the, the, the knight is defending the, um, the d, d3 square here. So uh, d6, so you don't have knight d6. Uh, now there's rook a5. Uh, sorry, and if you go rook a5, attacking this knight and then threatening this bishop, then you can go queen e2. After rook takes, you go queen takes, after knight takes, sorry, knight takes, you go a takes here, this pawn is falling and uh, you have you have an advantage here as white. Uh, and th this, this pawn is quite dangerous. This is the idea. But wait, 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 what if, what if there is, what is the difference between h3 here and bishop d d3? Well, h3, let's go through the variation. It's the exact same variation here, and after knight e4, knight g5, uh, the exact same variation as before, but we have h3 here instead. Now, after bishop takes, bishop takes, after rook a5, uh, if you go queen e2, uh, let's say b3 here to create a pass pawn, you, you eventually want to play f3 here. f3 to push back the knight and play knight d6, and win. but if you play f3, you lose the game to knight g g3 here. So, after you defend your knight, you don't have f3 anymore to kick this knight back and to go knight d6 and win the game. So th this is this is the key difference here. This is quite deep. It's it's impossible for any player to see this, but with analysis you can you can find these nuances in in the position. So h3 uh, was shown to be not the greatest move here. So let's go back to our position. Now after knight e4, knight g5 by Amand, well, we talked about the variation. It doesn't work here because uh, at the end when after you defend you have f3 here. So um, see after after the let's see bishop takes here, bishop takes uh, and rook, you have you have queen here, you are threatening f3, there's no knight g3, and again if you, if you take we've shown this variation. Then I take here, I take here, and your pawns are very weak, and this pawn is quite powerful. So, uh, Carson played instead knight uh, df6, defend his knight, knight takes, knight takes, and now uh, f3 by Anand. Now rook, rook a5 by Carson, not the greatest move. So, uh, Carson's only hope here is to play knight c3. It looks, it looks bad, but... After knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes, uh, you go here b5. After, let's say, castles, you go b4 and you try to create something with this passed pawn. Um, this is what the engine is suggesting, but it's very hard to consider this. f3, Carson uh, played rook b5 here, rook a5. Now after f takes, rook takes, 
queen takes on uh, on a4, so the pawn uh, the pawn falls. But now Carson, Carson's idea is okay. You take this pawn at the end, but then I go rook a5, and then I take your a pawn a3 pawn, and I did not lose this pawn. Now okay, you lose it eventually after pawn takes and queen takes. But this pawn is quite advanced, and Carson is. Uh, Carson's plan is okay. I will. You have this advanced pawn. I'm blockading. I'm blockading the pawn, but I also have this this pawn, which which might do something. Uh, queen d7, and now castles by uh, by Anand. Uh, Anand goes. Uh, Carson goes rook c8 to blockade the pawn, and now rook c6 by by Anand, uh, planning to double, and also just improving his rook. Carson plays g5 here, which. This move shows you how strong Carson is. Okay, uh, he's definitely worse here. Not much, but uh, his position is is a bit passive, but he fights back. He, he lashes out with g5 here, and after bishop g3, um, if you go, you can play this, but then I get f6 here for free. Okay, f6, no, it's not good. Okay, so you can eventually, actually, you can go bishop e5, but um, Carson, uh, Anand goes back to g3. And now uh, Anand, uh, Carson plays bishop b4. If you take the bishop, you lose your, your rook here. So you don't want to take the bishop here. Uh, and Anand plays the best move, uh, rook a1. So uh, stopping this pawn and, uh, and also just yeah, making sure why, uh, black cannot push it. Uh, now Carson plays bishop a5 here. The bishop is defended by the rook. And he wants to win this pawn back, but it's not that simple. An uh, Anand plays queen a6 here, and after bishop takes, Anand plays queen c4. How are you going to unpin this bishop? The best move here eventually for Car Carson was not bishop takes, but uh, rook takes. After bishop takes, to go bishop takes and try to yeah, survive this, this end game. It's, it's a bad position, especially after rook takes here. You lost your pawn and... Um, Okay, it's equal number of pawns, but I have an exchange. Also, but also white's king is not the safest of kings. Um, so this is what Carson should have played, but he just played bishop takes, and now there is no way to to unbin here. The queen went to c7, and now Carson tried this move e5. It doesn't work. Carson's idea is after bishop takes, I give you the exchange and just hope to do something. Maybe queen takes and then try to go for checkmate, something like this. But Anand played e6. He was like, go home, man. Uh, taking is not good because uh, if you take rook takes, I mean, where are you going to move your, your queen? Or I can even take with the queen and trade queens. But I mean, here you, you, you have a lot of discoveries. So uh, Carson played king f8 and now the, uh, Anand played rook ac1 and uh, Carson re resides in this game. Uh, so... Anand, I think, I don't know exactly how many moves here he, he prepared, but he definitely knew this, this idea here with after f3 and uh, that uh, bishop takes does not work and f3 here is very strong for him. So f takes and now he took the pawn and played this this nice nice maneuver. He gave this pawn, he took a pawn, gave it back, but he improved his queen and um, yeah, and then later there was just no way to stop this pawn and uh, Carson had to suffer this this powerful pain and give back give an exchange but that did not help him and he lost uh, so yeah that, that was the game this shows you what level uh, preparation has has reached today in chess I mean such a small detail like h3 we think okay well, h3 is just a bone move i mean we we create luft for our king uh, yeah it can it cannot be bad i mean we did not lose a move here on bishop d3 we we, we can draw back with the bishop but after like seven or eight moves you, you just find find a small detail that really refutes all of the, the entire line uh, so yeah that was the game i hope you enjoyed like share subscribe uh, what else? And comment. Uh, tell me what you what you think about the game. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.